We begin by declaring that there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we declare that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his blessings on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all of those who fell follow on his path until the day of judgment. Ameen ya Rabbi. I would like us to ask ourselves this one question, a very simple question, but a, a triggering question to our nation now. The question of, have you ever lost patience or tolerance because of someone? Have you ever lost patience and tolerance with people? 
And if the answer is yes, know that this is okay. It's something common. And inshallah, today I would like to discuss a story from the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu And inshallah, I hope that it shed light on this issue of patience and tolerance, inshallah. And this story is about a man named Sayyidina Tufayl. Tufayl radiallahu So, Tufayl, he was a very, a very intellectual person, very intelligent and smart individual. And he was a genius. He was considered uh, by the people around him a genius. And he came from a tribe by the name of Dos. A tribe by the name of Dos. And Tufayl, he heard about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi and the Quran. So he decided to travel from Dos to Mecca to visit the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And upon meeting Rasulullah, they sat down. And Rasulullah told Sayyidina Tufayl, uh, the uh, five pillars of Islam and, and, uh, and basically he gave him da'wah and Rasulullah began reciting some Quran and afterwards Alhamdulillah to faith he accepted Islam and he stayed with Rasulullah for a few days and then Rasulullah the Prophet of Allah وسلم, told Sayyidina to faith go back to your people go back to your to your tribe and spread the faith there. He agreed, he went back, and the first person he meets is his father. Tufayl goes back to his tribe of Dos, and he uh, meets his father. The first person he meets is his father. And his father asks him, Oh my son, how was your trip? How was Mecca? Tufayl says something hajib, and it's incorrect, subhanAllah. It's kind of wrong. He says, so Father, I can't speak to you. I became a Muslim now. So either you accept Islam or we go our, our separate ways. So son, can you explain to me what this religion is? Sayyidina Tufayl explained to him what the faith was, what uh, Islam is. And his father was on board. And he accepted and he became Muslim. Then Sayyidina Tufayl went to his home and to see his wife. His wife does the same thing. Asks Sayyidina Tufayl, Oh my husband, how was your trip? How was Mecca? How was the Prophet? And he gives the same, uh, the, the same reply. He says, So I became a Muslim now. And I realize this is not something we are supposed to do well. So I became a Muslim, so I, I can't speak to you anymore unless you become Muslim. So, same thing she asks, What is this religion you talk about? You believe in? He explained the religion and she accepted it. She became a Muslim. So, like now her, uh, his, his, his father and his wife became Muslim. Now, he goes to his people in his, where he's living in this town. Begins preaching, begins explaining his son. But here we find a different response from him. Unlike his, his uh, father, and his wife, the people are unwilling to accept. And the people say, so I think we need some time to digest what you are telling us. I think we need some time. I don't think we are ready yet to become Muslim. And he loses patience. Topic is patience and tolerance. He loses patience. And is, he has no tolerance for this. He says, SubhanAllah. So what does he do? After the people rejected his message, after losing patience and, and losing tolerance, he decides to go back to the Prophet So, Sayyidina Tufayl, his father and his wife all pack their things and they go to Medina, at Medina. Because this took place after the battle of Khaybar. So they were situated, the Muslims were situated in Medina, at Medina, at Medina to Manawa. When he's coming, subhanAllah, the Sahaba, the companions, already residing in Medina, they see Sayyidina Tufayl from a distance. And subhanAllah, with Sayyidina Tufayl, hundreds of people. Some of the books of Sirah, of history, they say up to 80 families. 
and we know that the Arabs back then, they had big families. So usually a family consisted no less than four, five, six people. So approximately, we have Sayyidina Tufayl and his family, and then approximately 500 people entering al Madinah. And subhanAllah, the Sahaba are happy. And subhanAllah, I, 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 subhanAllah, forgive me because I forgot the, one of the most important parts of the story. So, after uh, Sayyid al Tufayl, he packs his bags. SubhanAllah, forgive me. Uh, he packs his bags. And when the people rejected him, he goes back to, 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 to Mecca. He goes back to Mecca. There's two visits. He packs his bag. Him, his father, and his wife, they go back to Mecca. Now the Prophet وسلم, sees Sayyidina Tufayl. He says, Tufayl, what are you doing back here? I told you to go to your people and preach to them. Sayyidina Tufayl says, Ya Rasulullah, the people of Dos, they're very bad people, they're very evil people. They are addicted to Al-Khamar and Az-Zina, they're addicted to, 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 to um, alcohol and to fornication. Make dua to Allah that Allah destroys them. Rasulullah was shocked upon hearing this. What does Rasulullah do? He, doesn't make, he makes dua but not to destroy these people. He makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide the people of Dos. And he orders Sayyidina Tufayl radiallahu anh, return to your people and continue to preach. But this time, be kind. Be kind. Be soft. Be just. Have patience when you are preaching your religion and have tolerance of the people. So, he goes back. And when he's going back, and constantly says, Sayyidina Tufayl, he's reminding himself, I have to be patient. I have to have tolerance of the people, whether they accept what I have to say or not. Because it's not a condition. You can only, only be kind and nice and soft to people who will accept you or your message. Because this is illa qali, this is very, except a very few number. So you will be cruel to the one who doesn't agree with you or he doesn't accept you or what you have to say. No. Be kind and just and merciful with everyone, whether they accept or whether they refuse. Sayyidina Tufayl put this thought, he cemented this thought in the back of his mind. And he began, pre he began to preach to his people with kindness, with tolerance, with patience for 10 consecutive years. For 10 consecutive years, he preached a preaching of patience and tolerance and kindness. And after this, now, the other part that I explained a little bit earlier, now Sayyidina Tufayl returns to Al Madinah. And the Sahaba that are residing in Madinah, they see him in a distance. And they say, SubhanAllah, we see Sayyidina Tufayl in the distance with a bunch of people. And like I said, the, 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 the books of Sila, some of them say 80 families, it's approximately 500 people coming to Al Madinah to become Muslim. So maybe more than 500 people coming to al Madinah to see the Rasulullah and to accept Islam and become Muslim. And the Sahaba are very happy, very, very happy. And Alhamdulillah, they become Muslim and they decide to go back except for one man. Pay attention because this is the, the magnificent part of the story. Except for one man who insisted on staying in Al Madinah with the Prophet. He wanted to shadow Rasulullah. He wanted, he was going to follow Rasulullah everywhere he went. Everywhere he went. Wherever Rasulullah would go, he would follow him. Seeking his knowledge, seeking his adab, his character, his, his etiquettes, all of this. Brothers and sisters, this is something that's kind of impossible. It's very difficult to do. Imagine you go on vacation, anywhere, Brazil, anywhere, not China, wherever. And you all of a sudden decide, okay, I'm gonna stay here, I'm gonna live here. Extremely difficult. How will you work? How will you support yourself? How will you feed yourself? Where will you sleep? Where will you live? You have no home, nothing. And this man, he, 
slept outside of the masjid. He only ate what people shared with him, or what people left over. Some of the narrations say, some of the uh, history books say, he didn't eat for days. He was homeless majority of the time. And he stayed with Rasulullah for approximately two and a half years. And in the six books of Ahadith, the well-known six books, Sahih al-Sitta, the six books of Ahadith, he narrates, this person narrates, over 5,000 Ahadith. And this man is none other than Sayyidina Abu Hurairah. Sayyidina Abu Hurairah. Now subhanAllah, who is Abu Hurairah? It's impossible for any of us to open a book of Ahadith. Sahih, Bukhari, Muslim, Tirmidhi, Nisa'i, Ibn Majah, any of these books of Ahadith. And we do not read, read the name Abu Hurairah. Because he is the most, one of the most, if not the most known and prolific narrator, transmitter of Ahadith. Everyone that studied Hadith or read a few Ahadith uh, here and there, they know who Sayyidina Abu Hurairah is. Always, constantly, you see, by the, by the narration of Abu Hurairah. Abu Hurairah heard from the Prophet Sallallahu he said so and so. So, SubhanAllah, when we examine these two people, such different people, you know SubhanAllah, sometimes you might be in class, you might be in, in school, and you might understand something faster than the person sitting next to you. You accept the concept that the professor is teaching in class faster and quicker than the person sitting next to you. SubhanAllah, you have Sayyidina Ufayn, very, very intelligent man. And he, what Rasulullah was preaching to him, he understood directly. Directly he understood. And SubhanAllah, Sayyidina Abu Hurairah needed 10 years to sort of digest and, and take in this message of uh, the religion of Islam. But SubhanAllah, Sayyidina Abu Hurairah surpassed Sayyidina Tufayn. Narrated over 5,000 ahadith and known to be more knowledgeable than the, than the other. Do not lose your patience with your brothers and sisters. Because this is the same mistake that our beloved Sahabi made and Rasulullah corrected him afterwards. He lost his patience when, at the, uh, the first migration back to his, his, his tribe. He lost patience. He tried once and then he gave up. He said, no, these people, there's no hope with these people. Then when he went back and he treated the situation with, with patience and with tolerance, then we see, and even subhanAllah 10 years, it's not like he went back, he was nice, and they accepted right away. Ten years, brothers and sisters. And then after that, people, subhanAllah, accepted al Islam. Teaching us, improving us, we have to be patient and tolerant of one another. Don't underestimate people, which is a problem we have. Just because someone's... Remember, these families, they were, uh, they were drinking alcohol, addicted to alcohol, and fornication. And they became Muslim. And Sayyidina Abu Hurairah was from these people, from this tribe. And became one of the most knowledgeable Sahaba. One of the most knowledgeable Sahaba. Do not underestimate people. Do not underestimate people. Because Sayyidina Abu Hurairah, he was a hidden gem. No one would have ever thought when they read this man's history, he would become one of the most well-known narrators of the Hadith. Have patience with one another. SubhanAllah, when we look at what's happening in the Masjid, are we treating one with one another with, with patience and kindness and we're tolerant? If someone's cursing you, brother, even if someone's yelling at you, don't yell at him back. I said that, I gave the same example a few months ago. You're walking down the street and a dog comes up to you and begins barking very loudly. You have two options. You one, you ignore the dog. Or second, you begin, go ahead, act like a dog and, and bark. Bark at the dog. It doesn't solve anything. Some of us are preferring option B over A. And this is not what our religion is teaching us. Be tolerant. 
Be tolerant of your brothers and sisters. And we see this in the Quran many times. Everyone memorize this verse, part of the verse. In the Allah ma'al sabiri. In the Allah ma'al sabiri. Allah verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the patient, patient people. Sabr has many different meanings. The most well known is patience. Tolerance. You have tolerance for your brothers and sisters. Someone's, at least in the masjid, subhanAllah, someone's raising their voice at you. Don't behave like him. Because the second you raise your voice at him, there's no difference. You have to raise yourself above him. If he's not following his religion, follow yours. And I'm saying his, yours, like it's different. Same religion, subhanAllah. Follow your religion. Follow your religion. He's raising his voice, you leave it. You leave it for the sake of Allah. And because you're in the house of Allah. Well, low min lower your voices. This hukm, it's 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 general rule. What about when we're in the masjid? When we are in the masjid of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah. Don't behave. Someone's being cruel with you, you don't respond to this cruel cruelty with the cruelty of your own. You respond, you respond to it by either ignoring it or by battling it with good. By battling it with good. Don't be, don't begin, don't become a mirror to other people's actions. The message is the only thing we have left, brothers and sisters. The only thing we have left. If we cannot become Tolerant of our brothers and sisters sharing the same faith, living in the same area, we will never move forward as a community. Never. We will tear our community in pieces when we don't learn to deal with one another, to behave with one another with patience, with kindness, with tolerance. We have to instill these qualities in our hearts. And subhanAllah, if you find yourself not being someone patient, not being, not having tolerance, understand it will take some time. You're not just gonna wake up the next morning after hearing the skupa and all of a sudden you have someone. It requires work. Let's start from now. Do it for the sake of Allah, do it for the sake of the mission, and do it for the sake of your community, for your kids because our kids are watching what we are doing. We set the example not by our speech, not by our words. We set an example for non-Muslims, for other Muslims, for other communities, and our children by our actions. And unfortunately, our actions, and they aren't so good right now. They aren't. So we have to reevaluate, inshallah, and learn to deal with one another with kindness. When you call people to Allah, you call with wisdom. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us. Like I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this in the back. We should put this in the back of our heads. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us if we are patient. The hand, okay, when the hadith says, when I say hand, the hand of Allah doesn't mean like our hand, whatever it means, but not, don't think of it as like a human hand. But the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the jama'ah, with the congregation. What's the meaning of jama'ah? When we congregate and when we fight and yell at one another and hit one another, no. When we come together with peace, tranquility, love, putting aside each other's faults and coming together for the love, to gain the love and the jaza and the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fasbir! Why? Fasbir sabr al Because sabr is beautiful. It's beautiful. 
we will not, we cannot go through life without patience. We will need this, these two qualities, patience and tolerance, somewhere in our lives. Why not develop it for the Masjid of Allah? Why not develop it for the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the blessings of Allah is with the not with the group that's always fighting and love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how can we expect blessing? And the angels to gather when we when we recite Quran and in the Taraweeh prayer. How can we expect angels to gather and tell and record this in our book of deeds? When there is so much hatred in the Jama'ah. Remember, remember, being kind to the creation of Allah. Indirectly, you are being kind to Allah. What does this mean? When you are being kind to an animal, a donkey or a horse, and you care about him and his rights, that means you care about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you abuse an animal, that means you are indirectly abusing Allah. Because in order for you to respect, in order for us to respect Allah, as Allah, as our, our Lord, we have to respect His creation, which includes animals, which includes us, brothers and sisters. When you disrespect your brother, indirectly you are disrespecting Allah. Because we have to respect the creation as well as Islam, respecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us. Brothers and sisters, a very important announcement, our brother Mahid, his situation is getting very bad and it's getting worse, and I ask Allah, we, I want inshallah all of us to make dua for him. Please do not forget, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him shifa. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him strength. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he is the one that holds the shifa. The shifa. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his shifa to give it to Brother Mahid. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow Brother Mahid to return safely to his family and to his kids and to his wife, inshallah. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to remove this pandemic and protect all of us and our families. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Wa fi al-akhirati hasana. Wa min a'adhab al-nar. Allahumma rabbana hablana min azwajina. Wa dhurriyatina kurrata a'in. Wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannatu al-firdaus. ونعوذ بك من النار إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعلمكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمته يزلكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayya ala salat, hayya ala al-falah. Qad qamat al-salat, qad qamat al-salat. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, la ilaha illallah. Istaqimah. Allah Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين الله يا الله لمن حمده الله Allah Akbar 
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله على بصيرة أنا ومن اتبعني وسبحان الله وما أنا من المشركين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن شاء الله don't forget to make dua for the Muhammad إن شاء الله بإذن الله سبحانه وتعالى يجيب شفاء